Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mike Brewer and Susan Kessel with FPAC Channel 9, brought to you today on December 30th, 1996. Looking forward to a very happy and prosperous 1997. Well, tonight, Susan and I are going to talk a little bit about how we got started back in April of 1995. Was it that long ago? I guess it was. I just found my original notes uh, dating back here uh, to April 17th, 1995. Uh, we did a show from the chamber office with Pat Doyle and Sarah Cochran, and then went immediately to uh, the FIDA group, Royce Huff and Dave Reef. And those shows were right here in the studio at, at FPAC. Right. This is where it all started back in April of 1995. And Susan, kind of uh, give a little background on your involvement with Channel 9 FPAC here in Fairfield. Well, I started out uh, being appointed to the committee to, um, to help run FPAC Channel 9. And when we were lacking a station manager, I uh, decided to volunteer for the position. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's been fun and challenging, and I've loved it. And I'm going to continue doing it. But, but you yes. have news. Yes, I have news. And uh, for those who haven't uh, heard about it on the uh, radio or read about it in the papers, uh, I'm leaving. In fact, uh, we'll start my new job this Thursday, January 2nd. Thursday. As uh, president and CEO of the Burlington West Burlington Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm sure this is an exciting um, an opportunity to do this, but it must have been hard, a hard decision to make to leave Fairfield? Well, it was a toughie. Uh, I came here as a freshman student in uh, 1957. That's uh, 39 years, years ago. <laughs> that was before you were born. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, came to, to Fairfield, Iowa and fell in love with the city, fell in love with all of the people and I graduated from the college in 19, actually graduated in mid-year in December of 1960, but graduated with the 61 graduating class. And you and Kay have lived in, in town since? Yep, we got married in 66, and in 1969 we moved into uh, the house that uh, we'll now have up for sale, 601 oh. Highland. We've lived there for 27 years. Mark was born in January of, of 69, and we moved into this home uh, in June of 69. Beth, of course, uh, is a graduate, both are graduates of Fairfield High School. Beth graduated from Cornell, and, and she's teaching her third year of 10th grade English in Galveston, Texas, married to a, to a doctor-to-be doctor. To be doctor. Uh, now, how do they feel about your, your change? Well, they were all, actually, Mark is in France right now. Uh, doing s further study over there, and he uh, he's very excited about it. Beth is quite excited. She wrote a, a thank you, or not a thank you, but a Christmas letter and sent out to friends uh, saying how excited she was for both Kay and I to have this opportunity to, to really advance uh, my career, but uh, to advance some of the, the philosophical things that that you really want to do and, and we either didn't have the time or the money or the personnel or the resources to uh, accomplish some of those things in Fairfield. And that's not, and I don't mean that in any way other than a very positive way, but uh, going to a little bigger community with a bigger staff and a bigger budget. And go for it. Yeah. Um, and I know you have a lot of ties to Fairfield and you'll be here, you'll be back. Um, it's only an hour away. You know, right. It's not like it's the end of the forever. earth. <laughs> right. Uh. <laughs> we may turn right around and come back and retire in, in 10 years. Uh, you never know, you know. Well, I certainly am excited for you, and I'm sure you are too, and Kay. And, well, thank you, Susan. It's, um, it's, uh, it's been a very, uh, very exciting time, very emotional time for both of us. Uh, maybe a little more emotional for me than than for Kay because uh, of my involvement in the community with so many people. But that's made it pretty great. And yeah, it was a tough decision. But tough in the sense that uh, it was an emotionally tough decision. But uh, the Burlington people came up here and, and uh, I, I talked to Sarah Cochran, the president of the Fairfield Chamber, all the way through the process. So she was aware of, from the very beginning, that they had contacted me and that they wanted me to interview. And then when they came by with their uh, package, uh, even she agreed that it was an opportunity that one, uh, 
too good to pass just up. Just can't pass up, and uh, this gives me a chance to really do some of those things that, that I want to get out and try and mm -hmm. see what happens. And now, they are in the process of uh, sending out to do interviews for your position? You bet they are, and uh, people that know people or anyone out there listening tonight should contact uh, Sarah Cochran, who, as the past president next year, will has agreed to be the chair of the search committee. Now tell me, you have been involved with so many parts of the community. I just see you everywhere and I know that you're involved <laughs> in everything. But tell me some of the things that you have really done. Um, a job description, what you have accomplished. You're active in the FIDA. Um, well, Susan, that's kind of a tough, that's very tough, uh, if not totally impossible. Okay. <laughs> because part of, part of the situation is uh, that both, uh, both Fairfield and myself were very lucky. We were lucky 10 years ago uh, when it worked out that I could go to work for the chamber. Because when you look back, uh, Stu Gomer said it best. In fact, he wrote me a beautiful note just the other day from, uh, he's down in Arizona, at the, or in California, I guess. But... Uh, Talked about 10 years ago, he was president of the chamber when they hired me. But it was a good match. It was a good fit because I had a lot of background and knew a lot about Fairfield. I, he said at that time, and he said it again in the note the other day, that I turned an, an avocation into a vocation because I had been president of the economic development group for five years mm -hmm. uh, as a volunteer. And uh, in fact, uh, was part of the group uh, and, and was president when we purchased what is now the current uh, farm, the uh, industrial park mm -hmm. south of the Best Western, that whole area, which was just raw farm ground. In fact, as, as a machinery dealer, I farmed it for several years for the development corporation, uh, which was not really a money-making thing on my part, but it, uh, you know, it kept the farm going, it kept them solvent uh, so that they could make the payments. And then as time went on, we got uh, some government funds from HUD UDAG to come in and help us with paving and sewer and water gas and electric and so that industrial park was a vision uh, that several of us had years and years and years ago that became a reality and and is certainly a very great reality because it's a it's an asset to this community to have that kind of thing here now so you've accomplished a lot of goals that were set yes really did and and uh, but still have a lot of goals yet to accomplish too because you know one one of the neatest things about it being in a community and working like this is that there really is no end. Uh, that frustrates some people. And you kind of have to have your head screwed on right to be in the chamber business because you really never finish. Now you finish a job and you can for a second or two lean back and say, oh that was great. But, uh, but not very long. <laughs> but not very long because <laughs> there's, there's another group, there's another, another challenge, that there's another project coming right up on the heels. And so uh, you really, so many times, you never feel like you really accomplish anything. And, uh, and sometimes, uh, sometimes I went through that syndrome where, you know, you just work and work and work. Uh, I'm one of these people that likes to go to work early in the morning. I'm one of these people that wakes up on Monday morning and says, thank God it's Monday. Oh, wow. Because uh, I, I love to go to work. I've loved this job. And uh, I hope that whoever comes in can can love it as much as I have well, in the last 10 years. Well, I know that you'll be very hard to replace, oh. if not impossible. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, there, there are so many bright young people out there today that uh, I think, I think actually my leaving will give uh, the FIDA, and for the people listening tonight, the FIDA group is the Fairfield Economic Development Association that's headed up by Dave Reef as president and Craig Foss as the vice president. And then the chamber board and the 97 president will be uh, Jeff Wilson. And he's looking forward to this task. And uh, Sarah Cochran, the past president, along with Pat Doyle, uh, Bob Phipps has agreed to be president-elect. And so there's a group of four people right there that are very competent, very, very knowledgeable people. When they have this opportunity to reassess themselves, reassess Fairfield, reassess the economic development situation, how does all of this fit together, and then say, we want, we want these things to happen, now let's go find someone that specifically can come in and help do this. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think it's a win-win situation all the way around. I think I'm, I'm advancing my career and advancing myself. Uh, 
and I think Fairfield can do the same thing. I think and it's healthy. No matter how much uh, it change is hard to face, um, change also brings new ideas. That's right. And, um, and you will go on and have new projects and new, new things to look at. Exactly right. So that I think, I think, Susan, I think the real important thing here is the fact that, that it makes us recognize that change is inevitable, but change is an asset. Uh, change can be uh, a big asset. And, and it's a, it, it's, I'm going to use it as an asset for myself to go to Burlington. Burlington is using um, a big change down there to invite me into their community. Uh, they did something that um, is kind of the wave of the future. They have folded the economic development into the chamber. Mm -hmm. They used to have two boards like we do and two separate groups. And now it's all coming into one. They brought their convention and visitors bureau uh, people all into the chamber and their downtown group. So all of this is coming in under the chamber and I'm the first president and CEO. Uh, the old president was a volunteer and they had an executive vice president like I've been here in Fairfield. Mm -hmm. Well now they've changed the whole structure, changed the bylaws of both corporations so the, the economic development group is no longer a separate group, it's a committee of the chamber and it's one of 18 committees on under the chamber umbrella. So uh, in fact I'm, I'm wanting and looking right now to hire a vice president of economic development to head up that whole division. So you have a big a big job in front of you. Yes I do, yes I do and I got a staff of 10 people to start uh, answering uh, questions to almost immediately starting Thursday. But when you look at all the challenges and you look at all the changes uh, I really see some really great things happening in Burlington, but I see some really equally great things happening in Fairfield. So, do you think you'll do a talk show in Burlington? Do I don't they know. Have, do they have public access? <laughs> I, I don't think TCI has ever given them public access. I really don't. No. <laughs> and that's the home office of TCI, so I, right. I don't know. That's one thing that I hope that we will continue here in Fairfield. We will continue to do chamber talks. I've talked with Jeff Wilson and Good. he is excited and we'll be having some guest hosts and um, going out into the community and doing shows. And well, I think, uh, you know, when I look back at some of the scheduling um, and uh, we started in April of 1995, you started the, uh, the Channel 9 program before that. Uh, the Chamber Talk Show is just one small segment of, of FPAC Channel 9. So I don't mean to be so presumptuous. <laughs> it was very good for us to have Chamber Talk. It, um, I think, increased our, our viewership and caught a new audience. Um, it's been very good, and we do want to continue. <laughs> and we didn't get too many uh, rotten apples or uh, tomatoes <laughs> thrown at us. Uh, we had a good time visiting a lot of the, the factories. Really did. Manufacturers here in town. In fact, I still get a tremendous amount of uh, comment whenever you replay some of those um, original shows. So we'll probably be replaying you all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> You'll be here and, and not really. But when I, when I look back at this list, I think it's pretty impressive how we started in April. And then in, in May of 95, we went to uh, the manufacturing group themselves, Kenny Norton, and then the Art Association. We mm -hmm. interviewed uh, Nancy Horace. Then we had, uh, at that time, Jerry Headley with the Jefferson County Sesquicentennial Commission up here, and then Deb Glass came up with a fact group. Then I got TBA to be announced, and I forgot what we did there on May 29th. But then we did a, a new milestone, and Richard, uh, thanks to you and, and your capabilities and being able to move sound and camera around some of these factories and in some rather hot, uh, inauspicious places, and and uh, dusty and dirty and hot, uh, but I think we, we did do something that I feel very, very proud about, and I think the whole community should feel very good about, and that is that we, we showed things to people that they would never get a chance to see had, had you and I and Richard not brought this camera around. We stepped around. into the manufacturing plants uh, where the public doesn't go, where I have never been yeah. all the time I've lived here, and we're going to do this again. I think we're going to visit Dexter again. Yeah. They have um, some new equipment. Or, definitely, definitely. Um, Agriplastics, of course, uh, was our very first one on June 5th. I remember that one very well. Uh, <laughs> We've had still, some funny moments. Yeah, we had some very <laughs> funny moments. I've, I've got a, a tape of that since it was the first one. Uh, Richard made me a copy of that, and I've still got that. I've got that in my file. 
because uh, I looked back at it and uh, I talked too darn much. <laughs> no. <laughs> my wife is my greatest critic, and she, you know, when we replayed that at home that night, you know, at seven o'clock, <laughs> she just almost out of disgust said, "You've got to learn how to shut up." <laughs> oh, we've we've learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I hope people don't tell us to shut up after this show tonight because right. it's all talk and no show tonight. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we've got a lot of things to talk about. And some funny things that have happened. Uh, over the time, and of course, going out to Dick Smith was not a funny thing. It was a very serious thing, but we did get a chance to uh, go back and watch uh, his blow mold plastic machines mm -hmm. operate live on camera, and that in itself brought, I know for you and for me at the chamber, an awful lot of public uh, sentiment yes. being in notes and, and in telephone calls and just walking down the street. People have continued to say, gee, that was great, and you know, we love that. Right. Well, then we took the, uh, Richard took his camera to the Dexter Company on the 12th of June. Then we went out to, uh, who was no longer there, Pete McGlewin at Rockwell. And then on the 26th of June, we went to Falco, a Fairfield Aluminum Castings Company with Dick Hunt. Uh, July 3rd, we went out, and I remember that one. It says TBA also, but I remember yes. doing the third in the rain. That? I was gone. Were you? Yes. Uh, Richard and I did that one. We did that one out the, in the rain. The 4th out of at, July. <laughs> at JC's. The, yeah, the JC's. We went out to the park. Oh, and it was raining cats and dogs. We sat underneath the shelter. I, you got soaked. <laughs> and I was sitting there in a wet whatever picnic table. I must have been out of town. <laughs> I don't know how we did that. <laughs> but, but I do remember that was the a funny next one. one. The next one was um, a visit to the Jefferson. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, remember that? I yeah. think you had a goat or something <laughs> chewing on your I tie. wish I had a copy of that uh, that tape. Uh, someday when you're going through and cleaning a house, uh, on the, that was, <laughs> that was and, um, July 10th. Because the goat really did chew on my tie that time. Talk about ties. Your ties have played an interesting part in our shows. Thank that you. one. Now, yes, and this one. Now, this is my Mickey Mouse tie, and thanks to Juanita Martin, uh, my lifelong eight and a half years, <laughs> secretary receptionist at the chamber, gave this to me for Christmas. Good friend of mine, uh, Reverend Walrab, this morning at coffee, asked that if I was making a statement today with my necktie, and the only statement I'm really making is that Juanita gave it to me for Christmas. It matches my black coat very nicely. I happen to like Mickey Mouse <laughs> very much, and so uh -huh. that's the statement I'm making. Now, another tie event was the day that um, we did the greenhouse show, and I think you had fruits and vegetables I had, on Yes, I had my start, vegetable garden. We actually garden. started the show focusing on your tie. Yeah. And going out. So you'll have to continue to wear those interesting ties. And <laughs> well, that's been some of the fun things uh, that we've gone to. We did the Michael J's over at Martha Rasmussen's and then went from Martha over to uh, Sociables. With, that was a fun one. Uh, that was a fun eat. one. We got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I always liked those. You know, we wanted just to take do more of those, me. but it just didn't happen. I did, as a, as a sidebar, uh, I, I made a comment to the executive committee the other day that I I did over 475 live radio shows oh. in 10 years and two months. And I think, and I don't have my list here, but I, I've attended 120 chamber board meetings, 124 FIDA board <coughs> meetings, and over 600 other committee meetings. And I, and I, I have 24 mm. pounds of lunch, <laughs> breakfast, and dinners to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> I quit smoking in the process. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Actually, I, I put on 20 pounds about four years ago when I quit smoking, and I've never taken it off. I, I'm going to try and turn over a new leaf going to uh, Burlington. New start. Since Kay isn't there, and so I have you know nobody to feed me at night. <laughs> I'm gonna you can go out to the health food restaurant. Yeah, well, I'm Do gonna, they I'm, have them I'm going to join the Y, <laughs> and so I'm going to go okay. run around the track and... and I know that sounds pretty bizarre. You'll get to know lots of people. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate... Uh, then we, we never did get out to Plexco, and that's one that, that I would hope that you would get to. They were on uh, shutdown summer vacation when we went out, or scheduled for August 14th. We mm -hmm. never got to do that. Uh, Pete Nelson, uh, I forget what happened. We didn't get to do Pete at the Nelson Company. Uh, I think you did Midwest Air Gas by yourself, or did we ever do Midwest? They were going through that transition period, so I'm not sure we got uh, to do that. I don't think I did. Yeah. Then, uh, what did we do that August? <laughs> I don't know what we did that August. <laughs> we I took a break. <laughs> we must have. No, I think we did some things. 
think we probably had a play going on with that's that. What we did. Yeah, that's and what we did. We probably did that while you're on vacation. I think so, because I think I took off once the Ozarks that year. <laughs> then, then we came back and did the. Um, uh, long manufacturing, no, we didn't get around to doing that one either. But we did H&H &H mold and tooling. And uh, J&B Plastics, you and I went out, Jay Silverman took us yes. on a tour of, yes. of J&B Plastics. And, um, Fairfield Line, I think I did without you. You did that one without me, yes. You were taking a big break in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I must have taken a big break in 95, I don't know where I was. Aww. It's hard to say. Then, uh, then we did some Christmas retail open houses and some Christmas and lights. Brush. Stuff. And Harper Brush. Brush was around... Halloween. Yeah. Oh, yes. I remember doing that one. Yes. Yeah. We, Barry Harper wasn't there, so uh, Gary Moore took us around. So we had a good time. And uh, then this year, well, then the chamber board decided that uh, maybe doing this every week was a little more time than what they were kind of willing to loan me. Every week is very difficult yeah. to put together a show. It truly so we is. have done some reruns. Yeah. And I think if we can get two shows out a month, uh, yeah. would be adequate and interesting and <laughs> not too hectic. Not too hectic. I think, I think the schedule we started with in 1995 uh, was, was pretty energetic. But it kind of made a statement. And I think, uh, you know, I, and I don't want to be apolitical a here on uh, Channel 9, but. Uh, Everybody knows that it got off to kind of a rocky start, and some things uh, happened that the public was not very happy with. Right. And so, out of uh, some very strong public sentiment, uh, you came on board, and uh, then after some period of time, uh, I came on board. I remember going to you and talking to you and very hesitantly asking if you would consider this, <laughs> and you had been thinking about it and decided to do it, and I thought, oh, great. And it's been, it has been great. It has, and, and I feel very good about it. I think, I think we've given uh, the people in Fairfield an opportunity to do things, to see things, but in a very homespun way, in a fun way, uh, because <laughs> right. I don't profess to be any kind of a professional TV uh, commentator whatsoever. Uh, you may aspire to that, but uh, I don't think I ever will. Our equipment has gotten better, yeah. and it's getting better all the time. And that's not to say that don't, uh, don't shut off the cards and letters, folks, because we still do need some funding for some uh, additional equipment. We've made some great strides up here. But uh, if you've got some extra funds here at the end of the year that you'd like to contribute to a very worthwhile cause, why send your checks and cards and letters to FPAC Channel Line, Susan Kessel, right up here. What's your address? 607 West Broadway, Suite 310. And it is a tax-deductible contribution because part of the city group, and so there'd be no reason why you couldn't accept some of those We dollars. are looking at um, a major goal for this coming year in 97 is purchasing a new scrolling system. The scroll is what you see mm -hmm. run on the TV all the time. And right now, uh, Richard was just out of town and looked at something very exciting. And so we're, we're looking at that. And... That's what the public sees all the time when yeah. we don't have shows on, and we want that to be good. Oh. So we're looking at a big improvement. I think uh, something that maybe a lot of people don't take advantage of, we do around our house, and that's um, KSUI being yes. on uh, Channel 9 all the time. We Just wake have up to your that. TV on yeah. and uh, listen to KSUI, the yeah. background um, music. I happen to be a particularly big fan of KSUI. We listen to uh, classical music. A lot. Wake up to it, go to sleep to it on the on the radio at, at the bedside. I, and then we also get a lot of uh, community announcements that yeah. we put on there. We get more all the time. Um, try we try to be a community minded station, and that that means the chamber too. And we're excited to have had the chamber talk show. Well, you know, like I told Jeff Wilson just not very long ago, and, or Marnie Mellon, I think it was, and she said, well. You know, it's tough to say goodbye to your friends. And, and I said, well, you know, I, I don't prefer to look at it that way. I really prefer to look at it by saying, uh, I'm going to Burlington to make more friends. Because we're not as far away that we won't continue uh, a great friendship. I certainly, uh, certainly hope that you and I can continue the great friendship that we've established. You know, because personally, uh, I've gotten to know you much better than ever before. We've had some fun doing a show and 
showing some people some things, another side of Fairfield that they wouldn't have a chance to see. But I think uh, more importantly, uh, you know, we kind of build this as being a farewell situation. I really think it's uh, probably more appropriate to say uh, welcome to a 1997 and, and stick with us because we've got some new challenges ahead of us mm -hmm. and some new shows will be taking place in 1997 and some new people will be on here and you'll have a chance to, to see a Jeff Wilson and yes. uh, to talk with Jeff. I know yes. Sarah will be more than happy to come back. She's, she's mentioned that to me. You can quote me right. as, as, as having said that. <laughs> Sarah will come back and, and help do a show or two. Uh, I think Bob Phipps will be very anxious to help uh, along those same lines. Uh, Bev Nelson, an officer of the chamber, and Jody Kerr, uh, as well as Steve Triplett. And I think one of the things that was a highlight in, uh, I don't know when we did it, I think it was in 90, Six. Sometime we went down yes. to the junior high to their modular classroom. Yes, and now Steve Trip, uh, Steve Triplett, the principal at the middle school, is uh, an officer of the Fairfield Chamber, and I think uh, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't include more of that school yes. situation. Yes, we're trying to increase that. Right, the chamber is involved in the school to work issue in a big way. And it, not just in Fairfield, but nationally. Mm -hmm. And School to Work is, is a name that's going to be with us for a long, long time. Federal government has put its emphasis into uh, School to Work issues, and, and I won't go into that, but it's basically just uh, how to get kids educated so that the people that are hiring people mm -hmm. get the kind of quality and the kind of student coming into their workplace that they can train and put to work. So, uh, I'd like to see you really go after the school issue, and particularly now that Steve is on uh, an officer and on the board of directors, I think he's a perfect person to we'll get involved. We'll remember that, too. Yes. And you never know when, when Richard and I might show up in Burlington with a camera yes, and a microphone can, yeah. and follow you around <laughs> or something and just check up on you. Hey, that'd be fun. In fact, I'd, I'd issue the, the invitation to you right now to say that uh, at some point in time uh, it'd be a fun thing to come down Snake Alley with your camera and uh, go down to the port of Burlington uh, where we've got the Welcome Center and, and uh, we could show you the, the new boat at that time. Sounds great. We could do all kinds of things. It'd be a fun thing uh, for all of us to have a chance to do and so I'd issue that formal invitation. We'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Mike for everything that you have done for Fairfield for all the people, for FPAC TV, for myself, and we wish you the very, very best. Well, thank you very much, and uh, it, it's a lot of fun. I think uh, Channel 9 has been a lot of fun. I think it can continue to be um, a real asset. Thank you. And that's been Susan Kessel and Mike Brewer for our final Chamber Talk.